Memphis, Tennessee, and from auditoriums across America, we present the Bountiful Blessings broadcast with Bishop G.E. Patterson. Our mission is to reach the universe of mankind with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, admonishing them to receive the gift of his spirit, to lift and nurture the total man as we expectantly await the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I command you to be healed, be delivered, be set free. Hello and welcome to the Bountiful Blessings with Bishop G.E. Patterson. We are going to take you into today's broadcast spoke by Bishop Patterson with today's message entitled, I Am Free. So open your hearts and receive the word of the Lord. God bless you, and let's go into today's telecast already in progress. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, I want to begin with verse 31 and um, read through verse 36. John, chapter 8, verse 31. If you have that, say amen. Come on, let's read together. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Then answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How saith thou? ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Well, how many of you can declare today, I am free? All right, I am free. This word which came from the lips of he who is the word, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was penned many years, many centuries prior to uh, the Declaration of Independence that was signed uh, in the year 1776 whereby the 13 colonies declared themselves free from the motherland of England, from the tyranny of the king, uh, declaring that we are now a free nation and that we are no longer in bondage to anybody. Well, as a result of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, war broke out. It's one thing to declare yourself free. It's another thing to be ready for the war that will follow. And I want to say to you today that when you determine in the realm of the Spirit that I will no longer be a slave to Satan. I will no longer be a slave to any of his demons. I will not be a slave to the habits. I will not be a slave to those things that have kept me chained and bound and, and not walking in the freedom of the spirit to do the will of God. You can say it, but get ready for war. Because Satan is not going to, just because you say it, release you into the freedom that you claim. You've got to understand that um, this life, even the life of a believer in Christ, uh, this is a battlefield. Some people think it's like waving a magic wand. And once you wave that magic wand and say one or two magic words, then uh, automatically things that used to be exist no more and I've stepped into a new life. But you have got to be prepared to resist 
the devil. You got to be prepared to resist him with everything that he's going to throw at you once you proclaim yourself to be free. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in here today that's been chemically dependent. And you haven't continued to deal with those uh, chemicals, those drugs and alcoholic beverages and uh, the things that have helped you enslave, kept you enslaved. You haven't continued in that because you don't want to be free, but you just have not been willing to fight the battle. See, when God is working in your behalf to set you free, you yourself are going to have to prove some kind of resoluteness, some kind of determination. You've got to let the devil know that it does not matter how well people who are cigarette uh, uh, addicted, they have that thing of talking about them having a nicotine fit. You got to be willing to go through your nicotine fit. And if God sees that you are willing, that Lord, I'm no longer going to allow the enemy to enslave me, but I'm determined that if I die, I'll die before I'll let the enemy put his chain back around my neck. And when you show God your determination, he gives you the strength. And you don't have to walk in bondage you don't have to be a slave to anything god has designed you to be free now th this particular chapter and, and it is interesting when you read the word of god to see how especially when it deals with the life of our lord and savior jesus christ many times a circumstance a situation would arise and some comment would be made. And then what happens afterwards in that chapter is that there is something to clarify. I think it might have been, what, two Sundays ago when we revisited uh, that parable of the prodigal son. And uh, we dealt with it not so much from the prodigal son, but from the compassionate father. Uh, because that chapter opened with Jesus sitting down eating with sinners and the religious folk condemned him because he took time with sinners. So what happens? Jesus embarks upon a series of parables dealing with lost things. Talks about the uh, sheep that is lost and about the coin that the widow woman lost in the house. And finally, he talks about the son, the prodigal son that went off wasting his substance. And the emphasis was simply this, that while you are condemning me for taking up time with sinners, you've got to understand that my mission is to seek and to save that which was lost. And when you read the Bible, so many of the stories in the New Testament that after someone makes a criticizing, uh, a condemning statement toward Jesus, what happens in the rest of the chapter is his way of proving that you are wrong and I'm right. This chapter opens with the woman that was taken in the act of adultery. Here they come bringing a woman to Jesus saying, uh, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery and Moses' law said she should be stoned. What do you say about it? Jesus stoops down on the ground and starts writing, paying them no attention. And when you read the story, you see that they kept on after him. Uh, I don't know of anything that, that uh, for lack of a better term, that bugs me. <laughs> any worse than somebody asking a question and as though they think you didn't hear. They keep on, well, what about it? What, what, what about it? Wait until I give you an answer. I heard what you had to say. And, and the strange thing is, people will think about something for seven or eight weeks or months, and then they'll come and ask you a question and they want to answer in two seconds. 
you know, you've had seven months to think about it before you ask it. Well, maybe you need to at least give me two days. Uh, Master, what about it? Should we stone her? That's what Moses' law said. And Jesus stooped down, wrote on the ground, and um, somebody said, and I don't know what he wrote, I wasn't there. Uh, somebody said that he just began to enumerate some things. Uh, murderer, and all the murderers walked out. Liar, and the liars walked out. And when he got through writing, there wasn't nothing left. They may not have been guilty of what she was given, guilty of, but they were guilty of something. And then the other part that he could have written was, where is the man? You brought the woman, but how could you catch the woman in the act without catching the man? And according to the law, both of them were to be stoned. And you can't catch nobody in an act that required two people and just catch one. Um. So when Jesus finished writing, he looked up and said, I'll tell you what, you know, okay, the law says stoner. So you who's without fault, you be the first one to cast the stone. And all of them, their conscience condemned them, knowing that if they were not guilty of what she was guilty of, they were guilty of something. So here Jesus begins to teach following this experience with the woman. And let me just finish that story that when uh, everybody walked away, Jesus wanted to know from the woman, where are those thine accusers? She said, well, they're all gone. Uh, well, if no man condemns thee, the Lord Jesus said, I don't condemn you either, uh, but go and sin no more. Now, here he is, the son of the living God, the word incarnate in human flesh. He and he alone having the power to forgive sin. And those critics, those religious critics, and you can say what you want to, uh, the worst critics you'll find are church critics, <laughs> religious critics. They're always ready to condemn you. Jesus put it on, on this wise. Strain out a gnat and then swallow a camel. Busy trying to pick the moat out of your brother's eye. And you got a big old log in yours. Church folk can be a mess. But I don't want to deal with that today. He's talking about sin. And how that when one is enslaved by sin he's not just committing sin he's a slave now now let me just say this to somebody that's listening to me now somebody that's addicted to crack or somebody that's addicted just to tobacco uh, whether you're smoking it and there's still some folk chewing it Whether you are addicted to these chemicals or whether it is liquor and you keep telling everybody else and arguing with them, I can stop whenever I get ready. And you see that that habit has caused you to lose your job. You see that it has caused you to just about lose your home. You see that it's about to make you lose your very mind and you're still talking about I can quit whenever I get ready. You need to wake up and realize that you are a slave. The devil is doing just like they said, you know, the monkey on the string. Every time he pulls the string, you jump. Some of y'all looking at me funny, but I got to tell you like it is. Anytime the enemy gets his claws into you and there's any kind of a lifestyle that displeases God and yet you can't seem to straighten yourself up 
you have become a slave and you need to declare yourself independent and you need to tell the enemy I've been in bondage to this thing long enough I've been a slave to this thing long enough and I am determined that I'm going to be free and I'm not talking about some time in the distance I'm drawing the line today and I'm saying Satan from this minute forward you have no control over my life you've got to say it and you've got to mean it and you've got to be willing to resist with everything in you listen to what Jesus says here he says to them if you continue you got a lot of folk who will start but they won't continue how many people have I seen come out of the risers and come from the various sections down here on the main level with tears running even dripping from their chin after being pricked to their heart by the preaching of the gospel and stand right here and say that from this moment forward my life will never be the same and once the emotion of the moment wears off they find themselves right back into the stuff that they were in it is not enough just to hear the word you must continue not just something that made me feel good Sunday morning but you got to continue in it on Monday you got to continue on Tuesday you got to continue by turning the television off and sometimes taking the telephone off of the hook and picking up your Bible and reading the Word of God oh it's mighty interesting to turn on some of the television programs where they are talking about the problems of today and where they are offering solutions. Uh, sometimes I get amused. I don't, I don't watch, uh, I don't have nothing against Oprah. Oprah's, a, I think, a dynamic woman. She, but I, I don't listen at her uh, reasons and all of her cures. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't listen to Dr. Phil. And, and the reason I don't listen to them is because I don't think they have the answers I don't think nobody have the right answers until they give me the answers out of this book. <laughs> Giving me what sounds like good psychology is not the answer. The real answer to the problems of life is found in this book. You've got to get in the word of God and you've got to continue in it. And sometimes you're going to have to turn off the television and pick up your Bible and let God speak to you out of his word. Jesus says to them, if you continue in my word, not, not in the word of the philosopher, but in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. When I was just a little boy and didn't fully understand what uh, my father was saying, I heard him teaching one night. And he mentioned how that people take that statement, the truth will make you free. Uh, the truth doesn't make you free by itself. The only truth that makes you free is the truth that you know. Truth is there, but if you don't know it, if you don't accept it, if you don't apply it, it does not make you free. Well, let me explain it maybe a little bit better. I'm told that back when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, uh, when President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, he set free all slaves in the United States. But there were slaves who continued for weeks and months to be slaves, even though the truth was you're free. But they were not free until they knew the truth. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm here to tell you that, that there was a declaration written in the Council of Eternity 
that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and by the acts of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross you are free from any kind of bondage Satan wishes to impose upon you but you are not free unless you embrace that which he has done for you he's made you free not only has he set you free from sin he's even set you free from sickness he said he came into the world to do what to destroy the works of the devil John 10 and 10 blessed be the name of Jesus I want you to know the Lord said there uh, that the thief cometh to do what to steal kill and to destroy anything that diminishes your life it didn't come from the Lord Satan wants to steal Satan wants to kill Satan wants to destroy you and he will try with sin and he'll also try with sickness with illness with disease with infirmity but when you claim Jesus Christ to be your savior you can also claim him to be your healer and I want you to know you can be set free today even from that sickness that is seemingly taking your life away moment by moment and minute by minute all you got to do today is to believe God and declare yourself free let me go on back to this scripture and I'm almost finished you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free now, now listen listen at this they answered him this is verse 38 or rather 33 we be Abraham's seed and we were never in bondage to any man isn't this something how people can blind their eyes to their own history what do you mean Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man Abraham had a son named Isaac <laughs> Isaac fathered a son named Jacob. In fact, there were two, Esau and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob had 12 sons. One of them was named Joseph. And he was sold by his brothers into slavery down in Egypt. And what happens there? Potiphar loved him put him over his house and mrs potiphar one day desired that handsome young man and when she could not get him to violate the trust of her husband he had to leave his coat behind and she told her husband that this young man tried to take advantage of me and potiphar threw him in prison but because he was an interpreter of dreams he came out one day and interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And Pharaoh put him over the whole realm of Egypt. And because there was famine everywhere else, Joseph's brothers ended up in Egypt. And it ended up that they grew into a nation and there arose a king that knew not Joseph. Y'all know that story. And those who went to Egypt as guests became slaves and for 430 years Abraham's seed was in bondage and here they are we Abraham's seed we were never in bondage to any man sometimes folk won't wake up and realize the truth some of you all that's listening to me now and you're saying I don't see why you say I'm a slave to drugs I'm a slave to liquor I'm not a slave to anything if you're not why don't you quit everybody who's involved in a homosexual lifestyle hasn't made themselves comfortable talking about I was born this way there's still some folk who know that if you're a man you ought not be acting like a woman there's still some women who know you have no business trying to be a man. And you're miserable 
but you don't know how to get loose. You need to admit you're a slave. You're a slave to something that you don't understand. Something is wrong in your psyche. Oh, I, I know. I know when I start preaching like this, I know I'm a dinosaur. I don't, I don't deny being a dinosaur. But I'd rather be a dinosaur than to embrace the stuff that this generation is embracing. I believe my God is too wise to make a mistake. I think my brother, if God had wanted you to be a woman, he'd have brought you here as one. And it's because of the, your mindset that you have become a slave even to actions and a lifestyle that God is not pleased with. But that is the one thing that Satan will do. He will make one deny the truth of their situation. We've never been in bondage to any man. How said that? You shall be made free. Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. In other words, he's saying, Now you fellows are trying to condemn me, but I want you to know that I'm the son. I'm the son of him who created the heaven, the earth, and all things that are therein. I'll be here. My name is Alpha. I was here when it started. And when it's all over, you can call me Omega because I'm the beginning and the end. Uh, but I want you to know you need somebody to set you free. And he says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Free from all of your hang-ups. Free from all of your habits. Free from your bondage. Free from being a slave to the devil. And I'm glad to know today, as I go to my seat, I told you I wouldn't be up before you long, that I am free. Somebody in here, you can remember when you were bound. I'm talking about bound and had a case of the cane hepids. Like Paul said, when I wanted to do good, evil was on my right hand. I wanted to do good, but I couldn't do good because evil overpowered me. So the good that I wanted to do, that was exactly what I didn't do. And the evil that I didn't want to do was exactly the thing that I did. And Paul said, when I was in this state, I said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And while he was wondering, how can I be set free? I see Jesus when he came on the scene of time. And when Jesus came on the scene of time, he said, I want you to know that I'm the only one. I've got the key that can release you from every chain. And my God from on high, when he died and went down into the depths of hell, Satan looked like had enslaved men from the earliest of times. But I hear Jesus saying the only way that I can get into the underworld, I've got to die and let my spirit go down into the underworld. And according to what Peter says, he says that the Lord Jesus, he went back into the time of Noah, into the antediluvian world, and he preached to the spirits that were in prison. And while he was on his spiritual tour, he took the key away from the grave. He took the sting out of death. And he comes out that morning with all power in his hand. And I hear him saying, I am he that liveth, that was dead, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I got the key of hell and death that I'm holding in my hand. 
And I just want to tell you today that if you are locked into a habit, if the devil has you bound, then you can't seem to get loose. Jesus is a habit breaker. I wish you'd tell somebody, Jesus is a habit breaker. He can break the chain of bondage. He can set the captive free. He can release you from sin's dungeon. If you want to be free. But he's not going to do it against your will. He's only going to do it if you want to be free. Is there anybody in here today that's tired of being bound and say, I want to be free? Oh, I want you to know he'll set you free. Free from sin. Free from bondage. Free from poverty. Free from anything the devil has imposed on you. Oh, I wish you'd tell somebody, I'm free. Story of two precious pearls that through their life of service to God created a strand of pearls. That strand is seen throughout the pages of this book. Call 1-800-544-3571. That's 1-800-544-3571. The preceding program is sponsored by the Bountiful Blessings Ministries.